Hi, this is Jim from ePass Performance. I'm here to show you the 5556 kit that we offer. We offer it in two different ways. One way is with just the electric motor in all the parts. The second way is with the iDidit column, which you will have to purchase, and we will make the modifications to fit your vehicle. With the do-it-yourself kit is the electric motor, ECU, so all the steering couplers, motor braces, firewall plates. Okay, now we're gonna show you how to do the modifications on the stock steering system. We're gonna take everything out from the steering wheel all the way to the gearbox. And then we'll need to come on back over to the table and do our measurements and start cutting. In order to do this install, if you have a column shift, you will now need to purchase a floor shifter of your choice in order to complete this install. Now that all the steering components are removed from the vehicle, we will need to make some modifications to the components. Starting with the steering gear, we'll need to double D the shaft, and that's inch and a half out. Then that should be finished and reinstalled in the car. Moving on to the steering column, it'll need to get its first cut at 11 and an eighth inches. There needs to be a hole for the steering motor made a half inch hole four and five eighths inches up from the first cut next what we're going to need to do for the clamp to properly work is you're going to need to make three slots in the end of the column and then the column needs to be disassembled and the internal double d will need to be cut four inches from the first cut position inside the tube now that that's all done we'll need to install the steering gear steering components firewall plate, the adapter for the motor, and pre-assemble the upper half of the steering column onto the motor. And then this assembly will go into the vehicle. Okay, now we're here to show you how to in assemble the upper half of the steering column to the electric motor. First, we'll put the clamp on the bottom half of the steering column. Second, we'll take the steering column and slide it over. This part gets kind of tricky because there's a double D on the inside that needs to be assembled. And then you'll take your set screws, put them into the coupler that attaches the internal double D of the steering column. And you'll want to tighten these. Now that we have these two set screws tight, we're gonna go ahead and leave this clamp loose from the motor in the steering column in order to be able to clock the motor in the vehicle. Now we need to take all of this and install it in the vehicle. Now that the column and motor are installed in the vehicle, we're gonna to need to clock the motor into the correct position. Then we're gonna go ahead and install our bracket in the back side of the motor. And it's gonna go up to the brake pedal assembly and a quarter inch hole is gonna to need to be drilled and you're gonna put the nut and bolt through. Tightening that up and then go through and tighten everything up. Hang in mind the brake pedal needs to have clearance. Now that the steering column, steering box, and everything is done, we're gonna go ahead and install the ECU. The ECU consists of battery positive, steering angle sensor, potentiometer for steering feedback, and ignition hot, which will find an ignition source to feed into the ECU. Now that the ECU is installed, we're gonna go ahead and try the ignition and hear the click from the ECU. There you go. Now the power steering is working. We're gonna need to take the vehicle out and test drive it in order to recenter the steering wheel. And after that, you've completed the install of your power steering unit. Thank you for watching our video.